welcome to the Empower Her Play podcast. My name is Yashmin and I have Salma with me, Shafia, and I have a special guest called Dilwal- Dilwava. And she's a community active... No, you're not a community activist, are you? Just an active worker within the community. Yeah. Let me phrase that again. Yeah. An active worker within the community and you do work with the Bengali community in particular, yeah. but you yeah. also work in Walthamstow. Yes, so I right? do, yeah. And then you're doing a bit of fostering, so yeah. I wanted to touch upon all of those okay. things. She's a superwoman. I, I know. know. And your mum. You. <laughs> and you, you, know, you, you look after the home and everything. So can you tell us a little bit about your work and the uh, work that you're doing within Walthamstow and then talk about your venture that you're doing? Right. So I think first I'll start off being a superwoman. I think um, one of the things that we've all seen as we've grown up is, you know, when our mums came into the country Mm. and they had to manage it all without the language and without the family support. And the bigger thing is that they had left their family behind. So if we are talking about superwomen, that's who I go back to. And I think with us, we have... (laughs) <laughs> Seriously, and with, with us, we have the safety of, um, you know, a home and, you know, we're working women and we have all of that. We don't have any language barriers, yeah. so we don't even come close to what yeah. they would have gone through to give us the life that we have. So not at any point at the, with the work that I'm doing, I consider that to be in any of the phrases, because I think in every aspect of our lives, all of us are doing all the things that I'm doing but it's how you recognize it and Mm. how you identify it and it's just nice that you've put it in those phrases and that's what you see but when I'm doing the work that I do it's for me it's a process to get to I guess the end of life or to my next goal or what I want to do and the good thing is it all makes me happy Um, so my role in itself it is around access to higher education and employment and that is within Waltham Forest and that is, is a role. Someone else designs what the targets need to be and, you know, what the programme needs to be and I deliver on those targets. And um, the what, what my main aspect is stakeholder engagement and making sure you, um, the university that's in Waltham Forest, they are aligned with the council um, goals in trying to get more people into the university and making sure that the courses are aligned with what local people want. Um, going back to what I do in terms of... Um, I guess, part-time for myself. This came back a couple of years ago. I was working for another local authority as a community organiser and I was going into people's homes and I was going into local places through a listening campaign and we'd invite people to come and have a cup of tea and just talk And that's all it was, storytelling. You know, the things that we would have done when we were young children, Mm. sharing the stories, a little bit about you, a little bit about me, and then it became the story of us. And the story of us is what used to really um, get me excited because it's, I'm going to be very vulnerable here and I will share a little bit about me, about my journey, about how it was as as a housewife and through motherhood and um, just, you know, all, all the other issues that come with pregnancy and labour and all of those things and you, you're stuck in the house and then I would actually go on to talk about how I went into employment, how I got myself an education. I, I did leave college when I was younger but I sort of carried on that journey when my daughter, she knew more about HDMI cables than I did. <laughs> I would ask them what are HDMI cables and that's when I sort of realised that I need to go into some kind of career and initially my um, thought processes were around teaching because I thought that's the easiest thing Easiest thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't want to annoy Sal. <laughs> Sal, Just, when I meant easiest, it's around when you're a mum, you get the school holidays. That's that's what was easy so for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it just didn't go in that direction once I had qualified I um, looked around what really ticked the boxes about supporting local people the local environment that I'm living in and doing more beyond teaching because when it was around teaching you deliver the subjects and then that's it people go off into their own homes and that wasn't giving me the satisfaction that I needed so I went into community organizing and and I was given the training and around public consultations and everything and that's where I met the most amazing women from our community and they're the women that are at home doing the cooking and they're they've sort of trampled on their ambitions and their goals and I had an opportunity to listen to each of those women this is why I always refer it back to our mums and 
how much of a struggle it would have been for them to not even understand what their goals yeah. and ambitions were. Yeah. We're talking about empowerment. We're talking about, you know, breaking glass ceilings. But the, these concepts didn't exist for them because that was their life. So when I was having these conversations, for them, it was um, a barrier to come out of the house and explore. Mm. So that was the interest point for me, the exploration of what I could become and what was it that was stopping them? And I'm not talking about barriers around language or um, accessing employment. This is this has come more recently. But when I initially started, it was just, am I allowed to dream? Um, what if I start dreaming, then what happens to my children? Yeah. And it was that fear that I was connecting with because there was a lot of that. And I think in every single household, you will find that. Um, so when my work, it was taking me into more homes and I was successfully starting grassroots projects with these people and organisations, I always used to go back in my head, but what's happening to that person I had spoken to who's still staring out the window when when is it going to be their time how are they actually going to come out and access these opportunities and when you're working for someone when you're working for an organization or a local authority you're always restricted because there's very job very few jobs out there where you can go push the boundaries up, yeah. Isn't it? yeah yeah and not only that you just you know there's so many restrictions around finances yeah. and leadership and all of those so that's where i started thinking about creating bangladeshi women's collaborative and what that is about is just bringing together women with ambition and with the same goal me not teaching them or doing any for, anything for them but for them to say i would like one day I wish to see this. Mm. And so have you launched it? Well, when you say launch, it's like, have I had an event where yeah. everybody knows? It? Remember, originally we talked about this and you were. I had so have a... many ideas okay. about launches yeah. and inviting everyone along. But once the word started getting out, people were coming on board and I thought I need to get my stakeholder skills on board, got a team together where we were just building the stakeholder list. Now, what happened in the process? People wanted result. They didn't want a launch. They wanted to find out what it is that we're doing yeah. and mm -hmm. how is it that they're going to reach their goal. They didn't want to party to you find out the party. yeah no, I wanted the party. <laughs> I think we all wanted a party yeah, and it's party. like you know we, I was talking about you know sip and paint would that be a good thing um but it wasn't any of that it was how can I support women to reach their goals so we created a stakeholder list and then started developing a robust mentoring program where I've got a team of people who you know behind the screen so I've got a small team which is public facing and then I've got a larger team who work behind in um, developing mentoring programs mm -hmm. and it's all in smaller groups depending on the stakeholders mm -hmm. and how that works in ter terms of sharing skills and learning from one another so it's never oh I'm going to teach somebody something or that one of the mentors is going to be doing that it's also what we're learning from them so really developing leadership skills in the individuals that come into our program so I think for me it was a lot of the gaps that I saw that local authority wasn't being able to provide and I thought if I can start my own program and do it through a, a different organisation which isn't affiliated with a local authority then I'll be a bit more successful and through that I've seen people who have come forward you know where they start their own gardening produce and they want to sell that so then it's how do I connect those people and then it was you know cooking where people have come you know I cook bulk in this area how can I set up a delivery system oh, so wow. we arrange those things and they're the people we meet every day and it's just organizing and structuring their ideas and making it happen and then it's all down to them and I think if we all do support each other in doing that this is why it's called Bangladeshi Women's Collaborative it's about all of us working together in supporting Bangladeshi women who are in every single industry that we know mm. but yet it's we don't want to leave the other women behind. Yeah. We want to all be going forward together, supporting one another. So that's where Bangladeshi Women's Collaborative came from. And I'm connected with organisations who who are either supporting financially or who are there supporting as mentors and, you know, helping to deliver a programme. 
Inshallah, the plan is one day we'll have a launch, but Inshallah. right now we are focusing on getting the mentorship programs um, ready to be accessed by the stakeholders that are already so on board. So is it up and running at the moment? It's up and okay. running. And how it's, many women on the collaborative? So at the moment, in terms of um, the women who aren't a part of an organisation already, we've got 68 women who are part of the stakeholder okay. list, and we've got 12 organisations which are women-run. When, when I say organisations, I don't mean big organisations. They've um, sort of they do their own you know events or they go on a trip together um, and again the support I'm offering is for them to organize that structure so they can access funding or they can access help themselves and you know giving a bit of structure and guidance into how this needs to be done um, I don't want anything for myself at all and it is just if I see their success for me it's a success in itself and it's a success for all of us and it is just seeing <coughs> women fulfilling their ambitions and their so goals. So if there's anyone watching and wants to be mm -hmm. involved is yeah, there a yeah. criteria they need to meet or how do they get in touch? As long as you have a dream you have an ambition and you actually want to do something with it please do connect via Instagram um, I'll share our email address as well um, and then on Facebook we're on Facebook our Instagram is the most active Facebook it's only started picking up last month but yeah they're the mediums that we're using now we haven't created a website this has all been this year um, but yeah alhamdulillah it's it's how do you manage all of it with your work, this um, initiative, and then fostering? And just, fostering. Just take out. Do you know what? It's funny hearing this from yeah. Yash, who's asking me how <laughs> I manage asking. You know. <laughs> so yeah, I ask you all the time. How on earth do you do all the things that you do? So yeah, it is. Uh, I think we we just do it, don't we? Yeah. You know, nobody teaches us how to do it. Nobody teaches you how to bring up your children. So what made you, you just want to do, do fostering? Because you've just, you've got such a busy life as it yeah. is. What yeah. made you go to fostering? I mean, there's a shortage of, especially Bengali families yeah. going into fostering. And Muslim families. And Muslim yeah. families. Yeah. Um, so what made you decide that? So fostering, it wasn't something I would go towards because I was always worried about bringing someone else into my home and, you know, opening... Um, you know, my children being exposed to certain behaviours, you know, you, you know, you've brought your children up, you've given them the discipline and now suddenly someone else is coming into your home. So that was always a wary aspect for me. Um, but my older sister, she's been a foster parent for over 10 years. And I always used to question, why are you doing it? It's just so tough because she she's full on even though she has a full-time job as well they're, they're you know as a couple they're full on they're very involved in the children that come in and she fosters a lot of children and I think for me that was also a deterrent at the beginning I thought that's so much hard work but as my children started to grow older and I saw you know the success stories that my sister was sort of establishing within her own home and a lot of the young people they were going on to do degrees and they were going into you know full-time employment Employment. And you're then, connected to them. Oh my, at they, one point of their journey, you're connected to yeah, them. And they, the most difficult point of them, their you journey. You help shape that journey. Yes, yeah. And they always come back. And yeah. I'm like, sis, you've done your job. Yeah. yeah. And they're coming back. You know, you're, you're going to have such an enormous family. And she said, you can't detach from them. No. And especially once they start calling you mum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, it. Oh, yeah. um, but then it came to a time um, when our, in our family, my children were older. And then we, as I said, the, it was the success stories that we saw in my sister's family and I was speaking to my husband that is that something we can do and we both had to think about it for a while because we thought how is it going to fit in with our family um, and then it just worked out um, I did contact the local authority it was a very very rigorous process um, with the assessments uh, very tough and the amount of times they come into your house is mm, unbelievable yeah, yeah no um, training yeah. Assignments you have to do, it's, isn't it's it? It's ongoing as well, Dad. Yeah, you have to do a report yeah. and everything. Yeah. everything. Every day, isn't yeah. it? It's not yeah. just like, oh, put them to bed, feed no. them, and clothe them, and whatever. No. You have to write the reports about what happened Every on that day, yeah. day and any incidents that may have occurred. Yeah, Every yeah, single yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, you've got your daily logs, yeah. you've got the meeting oh, with wow. the social workers, your own social worker, and the child's Charles social yeah. worker, and then you've got other social workers calling you because they're talking on behalf of the family as well. Yeah. So there is a lot of that. Um, um, me personally, it's just, I think it's rewarding. So when we're talking about that, what, you know, what do I get out of it? It's just knowing that I've given a safe home so to that child. So you're in the early parts of yes, your yes, journey. Yes, yes, yeah. You've had one child. Are you yeah. allowed to talk about 
the, it, not obviously not I the details. I won't go into details, but yeah, yeah. But you've had the, well, your one first child, child come yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Um, is she still with you? So she is our child but she goes back to her mum okay. every now and then um, when the mum wants to see her okay. um, so that's quite nice for us and for myself we're doing uh, short term and respite oh, yeah. um, it's just something we wanted to start off Absolutely. with before we build our confidence and you know then go on to long term and I've put out my preference there as well in terms of the age category although they don't stick to that you get outside yeah. of the age category um, I've asked that if I can start off with a specific age category um, and as I said, the process was just quite tough and long. Mm. And at one point, it was uh, the application was withdrawn from us because of my husband's diagnosis. And then we thought we can't be doing fostering. So a year and a half went by mm. and we weren't considering fostering at all. We thought it's just not going to happen. And again, this year, January, um, we again went through panel. We had a few more assessments. And then April this year, actually, we were officially a foster family. Welcome to the Muslim Sports Association, where empowerment and sportsmanship meet for Muslim women. Dive into our world of sports, tailored exclusively for you. From the exhilarating teamwork of football and the strategic plays of netball, to the challenging strokes of dragon boat racing and the precision of fencing, whether you're looking to find your strength in wellness classes or experience the thrill of the NFL. We've got it all. Join a community where faith meets fitness, courage and camaraderie. The Muslim Sports Association, where every Muslim woman discovers her champion within. Visit us today and kickstart your journey to greatness. Your sport, your sisterhood, your strength. So you yeah, must see right. some really like distressing cases come through. How do you detach yourself emotionally? I think that's one thing I do better than my sister. Um, my sister also, can't... I think you're also learning as well. Yeah. Because remember, your sister's done it for years. She's done it for so so you, Yeah, so that's why I'm thinking she's somehow managed to do but it. You know I, what I, mean? I can imagine myself, like, if they've got a really sad backstory yeah. and they're coming to you and they just want that love, love and somewhere safe to come home to... And then when you when they leave you, you've invested so much of your yeah. time it's hard, and emotion the in in them as well. You you're not completely it's a lot like of tears, isn't it? Yeah, a lot that's of tears. I feel, oh my god, I would miss that child yeah, so yeah. much. Yeah, I miss you when you leave my home. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm gonna miss you when I go home. <laughs> I, swear, I miss you. Yeah. Oh, but it is that. But someone that child. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you, know you, mean? you you do become their parent. You get attached. Yeah. Like there's a couple of my friends who are foster carers, mm. and I remember my. Uh, uh, my friend's first first foster child when she went when she was in a mess. We didn't know how to support her because I didn't know why that yeah. I had to think she was in like you know the whole family was crying and then it happened every time every time. But alhamdulillah easy, now yeah. she's um, the last foster child is their own now. Because my older brother's fostering and he, I think he's had um, that child for six months maybe six months oh, yeah. maybe more. But she's such a little cute thing oh, you know yeah. like she's like. Dora the Explorer. Oh, the young kids, by the way. They're so lovely. And, like, you know, she's very talkative. Not thinking, oh my gosh, when that, even we've got an attachment to her. Yes, we do. Um, yes, yes, we, we do. Like another yes, niece. Another like, niece. Like right? I said, with my friends, foster kids, I don't see them on, a thing, on a every day, but I get attached. Yeah. I start Aww. crying when they go as well. And one, the one that's with my friend now, she calls me mummy as well. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> now, I think that is a difficult one. And it does come down to who you are as an individual. What yeah. helps me? And as you said, Salma, um, it's still very early days for yeah. me. And I, I am very focused on what I want. So with me, it always comes back to what's going to happen with my children. Because as you say, when you're in a family, your children automatically become attached to yes, that child. Yes, they do. Oh, God. Everybody um, does. And for me, that hurts yeah. more. Um, so I'm always worried about how my children are going to yeah. behave. And especially with the young children, you always think, oh, they're going yeah. to build that relationship. Um, but as I say, again, for us seeing that fostering journey with my sister, where they've been a part of the wedding, and you know where you get the same clothes, yeah. you know, oh. they're all part of that. Yes. They're doing this speeches as yeah. well so they do become very much a part of your life yes, i'm not do. fully there yeah. yet but so we'll what's see. the longest time you can mm. have a, a child in foster care because um, you for years you can end up adopting yeah you can end up adopting but if you don't adopt like how long can a child up to the 18, age, isn't it? 18 okay yeah. so you can have them for years and yeah, years, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can so anyone who's think because i think a lot of us have thought about yeah. um fostering at some point or we'll think about it there's a lot of people on the fence what advice would you yeah, give? yeah i was about to ask that i would actually ask that you question yourself as to why you want to do fostering. Because I think the most discomfort you're going to get is opening your home. And your to heart. 
<laughs> the heart comes later, okay. isn't it? Because it's it's yeah. yours yeah, and it's yeah, your yeah. emotion that you have to manage. Yeah. Um, and this is what I was saying about creating those boundaries. And that's probably one of the ways that I, I, I can do the work that I do. I'm very good at organising my own boundaries. So if you're able to do that, the emotional attachment comes later. And if that builds, that's a good thing. Yeah. Fostering, there's a lot of uh, private uh, companies that are doing fostering. I've taken the local authority route because it suited me the best. Mm. I feel that you get a lot of support for them from them and there's a lot of guidance and especially when it comes to safeguarding yeah Yeah, there's there's a lot of them there's a lot of muslim organizations that do fostering it that avenue was not something i was ever looking into i was always interested in local authority and again it might be because of what i've seen my sister go through um so sorry what's the difference between the private and the one local then I personally, I feel I've not done the private route, but from what I've seen through the local authority route, I've been given a lot of support. Oh, support, sorry. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, yeah. So for myself, I and feel that I think that the guidelines the... are different because yeah. I looked into fostering mm-hmm. ones oh, and I looked into a private company and they have different guidelines. Mm, oh, yeah, wow. so when I had like just sort of got better after treatment and stuff, the local authority said I had to wait five years before I could apply to be a foster carer, whereas really? the private company said, hey, here you go, Re- you know, green flag. Um, them yeah. straight away. Wow. Yeah. So it, surely they should be regulated in the same way and have the same sort yeah. of policies and criteria, no? And um, when you read about the need. Um, for foster yeah, families yeah. it's actually quite a desperate situation yeah. that we're in especially in Redbridge as well there is a huge need for foster families so if anyone is interested do look it up yourself um, whether you choose the private route or local authority route is completely up to you as Salma just said once you're on that journey you find out for yourself mm. I've never looked at private mm. um, organisations because for me it was always local authority mm. and it's also because I've worked for local authorities so I understand what's out there um, But I would completely 100% say to people, do think about fostering, especially if you're at a journey where you can offer your home and your heart um, (laughs) to other people that are out there. And if you don't want to do fostering, you can offer respite support to family members who are doing fostering as well. Oh, really? Yeah, um, one of the things that we've been offered, especially when it comes to long-term fostering, if we have relatives or friends who can look after that child while we've got an emergency that's oh, come wow. up. Um, so, yeah, there's that option as well. It's creating a whole networking yeah. system, yeah. isn't it? Often we don't even know about it. Like that, I'm so glad you're sharing all yeah. this. Oh, because thank you. There's a lot of people who probably have never heard of these, like even the different options and, and whatever. That's Obviously, amazing. there's good and bad. Like you, mm. You're very new to it, but your sister must have a experience of dealing with children that are unruly and probably a bit oh more goodness, undisciplined yeah. or in, is it what's the word undisciplined i don't know if i'm saying that right but <laughs> i don't know if that's we'll the word i've just made up yeah, 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 yeah. To the dictionary. yeah. Um, but yeah just like there's good and bad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So you do hear nightmare stories. Yeah, you do no, no, there's a lot of kids who come with a lot of... That's um, what pissed, probably scares yeah. people. You're just yeah. grinning oh, at this point. I'm no, grinning because, because I, we both, there was a lot of times when we did say to my sister, why are you doing it? Yeah. Why are you doing it? And that's things like, you know, where children have run out of school or she's gone to drop a child off and they've let go of her hand and run off. Oh, and can you imagine for a parent that's just like, where is this child going? And if something happens to that child, child the concern is the child and then you end up having a panic attack over it so there were the things that actually took me a long time to Mm. think about like am I physically and psychologically ready to take on that kind of responsibility um and she's she's been doing it and I think she's become Mm. so used to it she do all ages she does all ages all backgrounds and I think that's one thing I've learned from her as well because when I first started off it was how do I welcome someone who's not of the same background who's not of the same faith um who's not so the same you know cultural in terms of the food we eat Mm. we have a lot of rice and curry in the house so uh, how how do I sort of cook other foods other than you know like pizza and waffles and you know pasta <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry they're the only other things that I know about um, <laughs> all right. but it was it was for me the you know the child that we had she made me feel so comfortable I thought what was I worrying yeah. about yeah. you know she was happy to sit and eat rice and curry even though I had cooked her pasta mm. and she was even more concerned about us she was asking is it okay if we wear if I wear shorts in the house and I found that so absurd because throughout the training we were always taught how to be mindful of the child oh. and you know how to be respectful but this is I saw a child who's asking us if we're comfortable with her mm. and for me that was a huge learning we forget yeah. they're little yeah. people with the same 
things that you're going through yeah. she's going through that as well yeah. and you've got another thing you've got to understand that yeah. Daughter, yeah. Isn't yeah. 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 Exactly. and I think what we forget is you know young children mm. you know what they're aware of you know they've come into a home and they've noticed these people look different to yeah. me yeah. Um, so let me just ask some of these Aww. questions yeah. and it helps for me the helpful thing is that my children are quite you know supportive so they will help welcoming the child the level of maturity for that child as well isn't it but you think the trauma that they're going through that's what I was going to say you know like these children they go through so many things by the way and like you said at the beginning they just want love do you know and it's sad though to see and know that there's so much out there you know that's why fostering is important Mm -hmm. if I had this place I wouldn't mind I love kids (laughs) you would throw apples at them (laughs) That's a way of showing love. Catch! I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I actually love... <laughs> We've just blacked yeah, no, 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 Exactly, no. I wouldn't do it in the future. Oh, no. <laughs> then, then you'll get If that. I have space, trust me, I wouldn't. Yeah. Really, yeah. I love kids, I do, but it's a good thing that you, think, my friends, I've seen two of my friends doing it, mashallah, it's been... I, I feel well, like there's a, when you know someone who's done it, it gives yeah. you a bit more confidence to do yeah, it. Yeah. There is a bit of that, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Like you're saying your sister, you're saying your friends yeah. and so yeah, on. Yeah, both my sassies have done it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And my said, brother yeah. has now started in to it but obviously my brothers had young children mm. so I'm not sure how they would react with an older. older children yeah. I don't know if they've put a criteria down or what to not accept an older children but I've seen my aunties of sassies have children of different ages yeah. mm. um, and some of them have been quite difficult Tough. yes yeah yes. some of them have been quite difficult but then you take them as your own oh. family members. Well, yeah. So if you give them yeah. a dawah, yeah. they all come, isn't it? Yeah. So you're accommodating for the whole yeah. family. Yeah. But you know, we've got to also forget. remember that our own children can be difficult as yes. well. Do you know what I mean? And uh, okay, yeah, they but, come with complex yeah. needs. So mm. it's a bit, There's bit a certain tone yeah. you can yeah. use with your Not own children. Course, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a certain number of apples you can use with your own children. No, it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the um, areas where the social worker had to really discuss with me is discipline. Okay. Like, how, and I'm like, I haven't had to tell my children of ever um, because they were talking you about just discipline. Them eyes. <laughs> like, yes, isn't it? That's what we've grown up with seeing mum's big eyes. I'm like, do children behave like that? And she was shocked that I was asking that you know uh, will they answer back will they shout back at me why would they do that i just couldn't understand that i'm going to give them the love and i'm going to give them a home i'm going to give them security safety all of that why would they shout back at me you haven't done it from day zero though, <laughs> no, but, yeah. you, but you know the training yeah. you do train you how to discipline yeah. the child don't, don't you yes they? yeah so yeah, even throughout the whole process we have regular support groups we have training that we have to attend it's mandatory um and then you have um other reward systems as well they give you a lot of support in where to take the child mm. um, and there's always a social worker on the other side of the phone mm. and I was also just going to pick up on a point that you mentioned before you know so we've got our little communities our cousins group our dawats mm. that we go to so they're also trying to create um, satellite communities for yes. foster families yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah and when I was reading about it because I was asked if I could join one I went We've been doing that our entire life and for them to think of that, you know, for foster yeah. foster families and mm. the children that are coming along, I thought that was a lot of forward thinking and really giving that family um, value and that family lifestyle to those, you know, foster children, children as well. Yeah. You're quite new to this, but yeah. is there a rise in families, uh, like children from Bengali background or even a South Asian background, coming into the system? There is a lot um, and it's just, it's not just... Bengali specifically it's I think the amount of Muslim children that's one of the things that my husband was saying because at the initially when I started my assessment there was an influx of Afghan children um, unregistered minors that were coming into the country and one of the bits of work that I did through um, community organising was establishing a home for two Afghan sisters who had walked six months from Afghanistan oh to God. Dover. Oh um, and it was that connection where I thought, you know, as, as a Muslim, I have to do more. Yes. Because, you know, we've done, we've created a mess and now we have to support in building a future for these people that are coming into the country so that was one of those stories where it helped me convince my husband Mm. because my husband was always like I don't know you know is this a good way to go but because he saw that as a success story Mm. and he actually felt it an obligation upon himself to make that difference and the number of Muslim families that are also going through problems it's not about children coming into the country 
it's a lot of domestic abuse that is happening yeah. out there and you find that in all communities yeah. um, and then you've got young children who've been taken away and especially when I get um, referrals for six month old or two day old yeah. in my head I'm like yeah I love what's happening yeah. in that family yeah. for it to have got to that to a newborn yeah and yeah. I think you know as Muslims it is our duty to look at it. and like you were saying chef if you have space I think a lot of people need to because we're a bit Closed doors, yeah. isn't it? Me, my children, my world. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Is, Islamically, is there anything like to say that we can't foster, or is it encouraged? It's actually encouraged. It's encouraged. Because if you think yeah, about from encouraged. the days of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was fostering. Yeah. He had people come and stay with him. He had children come and stay with him. It's always been. It wasn't called fostering then, but it's always been a thing. I think maybe there's rules and regulations yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. mahram and that yeah, kind of stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. keeping your hijab on if you've got a, a teenage boy and so on. Um, and you know, keeping boundaries as well, even between yeah. your children and, and those children, isn't it? But yeah. I'll, I'll let you I, yeah, no, I think Laura. it's manageable. But as you said, there's fecish issues attached to what fostering is yeah. and how it want, needs to be considered. Um, that's where, for me, the age preference comes yeah. in and I was quite explicit when I had my interviews that this is the reason why. And funnily enough, the social workers are actually aware of, um, you know, even there are young children who are going into homes where they don't take the hijab off because there are they've gone into a home where there are other men there. Oh. So it works oh. both ways. Um, and it's understanding what you are as a family and where you're willing to, you know, blend the lines a little bit. And ag again, how much you're willing to compromise in, you know, doing the better good. I mean, if it's a 15 year old child and you've got, you know, boy and you've got girls in the house, wh where do you um, set the boundaries? Mm. So I personally think it comes down to every individual, every yeah. family and what your idea is of why you're doing fostering. But I think it is a fake issue that you do need to describe, but definitely consider fostering. There's always a way around it. And and if you explain it, that these are your preferences, people will accommodate it because there is a huge need out there yes. for families who are able to do so. Because there's also families that can't do fostering because they just don't have the right skill set. Um, if so they were going to start that journey of um, fostering, they consider it. Where do they need to go? So... All the local authority have a fostering team and you can just connect with them. Um, I know recently um, there's a collective of local uh, authorities who are coming under one umbrella, which is making our lives a lot easier. Okay. So if someone comes from Waltham Forest, they can automatically come under Redbridge as well. So it's not okay. that only Redbridge is dealing with Redbridge. So that's a, you know, th that's a journey that's happening now and hopefully there'll be a bit more developments in the area. But yes, definitely do contact your local authority and find out and private organizations how's it been for your kids then <sighs> okay i've got three children and all three of them are different and my eldest is she's just mum part two you know whatever i can't do she's ready with oh, the food and oh, the she's very mature we just spoke to her yeah, yeah. and then the children uh, the children get attached to her more than me they're like i don't want to go out with you I, i'd like to stay home with her and i'm like what well, i'm the child here i'm the child i'm the child's mine so we have that um the middle child she prefers to stay in her room and do her own thing she takes a while to adjust especially when it's a short time she's like you know with long term she said she'll make a bit more of a it's conscious effort for every child. Yeah, yeah exactly it's and that's their personality what about your baby anyway? though your boy my, my baby is no longer a baby he's enormous um <laughs> i was going to say he's a so, <laughs> little baby isn't it so he it's did say he goes what do i get out of it <laughs> so that's the first thing that he said that's um, what babies do yeah, yeah so we were like you know if, if you <laughs> give up your room you know when there's like a what's it called a sibling mm. or when there are you know desperate requirement for just an emergency for foster care night yeah for the night yeah. yeah um i said if you give your room this is what you'll get out of mm. it he goes yeah yeah mum i'm in Aww. so he's quite good Aww. in that but one way. thing you know once you do have a foster child the kids become the yeah. adults by the way my yeah. friend's kids all yeah. had their say and my friend would say i'm the mum here well, yeah 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 because it's just like a child and they understand especially the old, older kids they understand so you probably get that from all your kids oh, mm. it's not like this i oh, don't hold the baby like this oh. you know feed the baby that's what my friend's kids do yeah oh that's nice <laughs> thank that's you nice. Delilah. yeah I really enjoyed talking you. to you, you. Um, and thanks for all the information about fostering yeah, thank you. and good luck on your venture. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, thank you for watching the Empower Her Play podcast. You can catch all of our previous podcasts on good platforms and please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.